Hi folks, Roj, not in the wood shop. Uh, the wood shop's back there. Um, it's full of tools, and uh, I haven't moved. Um, nothing's really happened uh, to me. I'm still here. I'm still walking around free. No, I wasn't in jail. Uh, no, they didn't kill me. And uh, actually, they uh, haven't messed with me at all. Uh, bothered me or interfered or anything. Um, they have their sphere apparently, and I have mine, and um, everything's okay. Um, I did uh, pretty much take the side offline. I mean, I put something up, but you know, I'm, I'm sure it's just not the same. Uh, I'm not on Facebook anymore. Um, I had to take a uh, a good look at at you know what was going on and you know was it actually very useful and I had to conclude that you know it, it was it wasn't really useful uh, certainly not to me um, you know there's a lot of absurdity occurring right now and um, me forwarding that on and uh, you know making comments about it um, that only just empowers it and, uh, right now I uh, I don't think uh, that my comments on those things are uh, going to provide any you know, true insight into anything. Uh, the fact that they're happening is pretty interesting. I'll go into that later. Um, but really what it came down to is, uh, you know, a very basic question. Um, you know, what would I do without me? Um, and to think about that. Um, and I decided that, you know, hey, um, the immediate experience was uh, more important than the electronic experience. Uh, it's not like they were making it any easier for, uh, for me to, uh, you know, say things. Uh, when I got to the point where they started, well, robots started editing out and, and blocking my posts, without truly uh, having any type of what I would consider intellect with regard to the content. Uh, it just simply blocking something because it can't contain certain terms uh, I think is asinine. Uh, I, I think it's juvenile and I, I think it actually, uh, you know, if, if they really wanted credibility or if they really wanted to, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, dominate, then doing that doesn't really help them. Um, that's a filtration, uh, at which point then people, you know, and as, as what's happening right now, people look at things like Facebook and even the stuff that, you know, occurs on YouTube and, and some of the larger social media sites as lacking any substantive credibility anymore. That the the only thing that's going to appear on there is going to be stuff that's really not that useful. And I, people are shutting it off. Uh, I'm not the only one that's left Facebook. Um, I don't see any real constructive use of that venue. Uh, what I do see is a, a lot of people that, that, you know, send me stuff and say, hey, read this or watch this. And, you know, I don't have time for that. I mean, you know, I, I have barely enough time for the stuff that I do. I mean, uh, you know, I work. Uh, I, I do have a job. Uh, in case you, you know, you folks out, a few of you folks out there think I'm, you know, just, you know, sitting around here. Um, I do work. I, I work for a, a small manufacturing company here. Yeah, manufacturing here in the United States. Hmm. Um, they are in. Uh, they are already post austerity, meaning that they've already adjusted their uh, their pay scale to uh, the new financial paradigm. And which, you know, for, for some of the people that are still employed, you know, making, you know, uh, you know, living, what I would consider living wages, um, they're probably in for a surprise here soon. Uh, what's nice about this, uh, this place is they've already adjusted their pay scales way down. Um, however, you know, housing and, and needs haven't been adjusted yet. Uh, so, you know, I have everything I need, um, you know, this, you know, this is where I, you know, hang out, this is the house, and, uh, I mean, it's not a dump, um, you know, take care of the yard, 
you know, in our way. Um, you know, we don't believe in a concept of a weed. Uh, we believe the weed is there to specifically condition the soil as, as needed. Otherwise, that particular plant wouldn't be there. And, uh, you know, doing that, it's sort of a, a permaculture thing. And my wife uh, really enjoys that. And uh, I like, you know, green uh, and living things around me. So, so it, it works out very good. We uh, still have chickens. Uh, they're out there. And, uh, of course, you won't be able to hear them this time. So there is some ambient noise in this audio, and the quality uh, and the production quality is really bad. So, um, you know, bear with me. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I've got a new machine here, and, you know, uh, were I not in, you know, austerity, I, I have all kinds of resources. So <clears throat> the biggest problem with uh, doing a video is I, I really couldn't figure out what more I had to say or what no more needed to be said. Um, it's all out there in the videos, folks. Um, and it's not like any of this stuff is going to actually improve people's condition uh, because the videos don't simply reinforce, you know, changes that occur inside us. Um, they don't bring about those changes. Um, that's a function of where one is in their experience and the timing of that experience. Um, it's been, uh, in, in July uh, 2015, it will be nine years since uh, I uh, began to see. Um, you have to understand that seeing is not a mechanical process, um, and it's not a function of light or your eyes or anything like that. In fact, Oddly enough, uh, some people with uh, the best sight are ones where their eyes don't function. Um, I, it, it, it's a matter of, I mean, I, eyes themselves are just simply a sensory measuring tool. Um, what one does with the data that they uh, receive from that measuring tool um, uh, can either uh, you know, be interpreted correctly or incorrectly, and I don't care how well or how accurate your eyes are, uh, what you interpret uh, from the data that you receive uh, is a completely different matter. Uh, one, one might perceive something one way and decide that, hey, you know, now's the time to kill myself. Um, and there's probably a whole bunch of you folks out there like that uh, that actually think, hey, you know, now, now's the time to, you know, you know, bring on World War III. Uh, lots of change since the last time I put a video out. Um, apparently, um, we you've decided to uh, you know uh, fight. <laughs> uh, there's fighting everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and we the odd thing is, as uh, more and more people believe that that's going to be the solution. So uh, you know, interesting to watch. Um, so. In, in, in keeping with this concept that uh, I'm not going to really be bringing anything really relevatory to you, I, I hate to sabotage the movie right at the beginning, because you, you folks out there that are awake, you're awake for a perfectly good reason, and, and you folks that are asleep are <laughs> probably not even watching this video, so it really doesn't matter. But if you just want to see my face, you know, here it is. Uh, I will, however, uh, I'll make some observations because... Uh, you know, nine years, uh, you know, when, you know, from the time that, you know, I woke up and realized I was in an insane asylum or hell or whatever you want to call it, um, not much has changed. Um, my observation of consciousness in general is that we're not quite ready to snap out of it. Um, and that means that there's going to have to be a, you know, a continuing application of uh, suffering. Uh, and we're getting it. Yeah. Um, so here's some of my observations. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking around at uh, the design scarcity package, and uh, you know, it, it is quite amazing. Uh, they've uh, decided to poison all the groundwater. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, that's, uh, um, that's what people who think they have control do. Um, they think that, you know, by poisoning this stuff, that somehow you're going to be completely dependent on them and that you're going to do 
uh, what they tell you. Um, I think it's more reasonable to conclude with, you know, based on the fact that they're destroying whole food webs. Uh, I, I think the Pacific Ocean is just about over now. Um, it's just a matter of people recognizing that uh, <laughs> all the stuff's dead um, or dying. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be very useful to us. Um, I, I know the WIP facility ended up releasing some information, and lo and behold, hey, it was 5,000 times what we thought it was. Um, maybe it wasn't a good idea to store weapons-grade uh, plutonium in uh, flammable kitty litter. Um, you know, oh, you know, the brilliance there. You know, the intellect is, you know, mind-boggling. <laughs> but... Um, you know, I, I'm sure we're all getting dosed, um, and that's a function of the, the you know, apparently the necessity. Um, I, what, what I see occurring is apparently this is the show where we uh, destroy ourselves um, and the planet and everything. Um, you know, at, at some point, an evolving being has to go through a process where uh, they experience what it's like to be powerless uh, and and destroy themselves. And, you know, of course, you, you know, we're eternal. Uh, and I use the, the word be uh, advisedly. Uh, there's only one consciousness here doing this. And, again, thank you for being me. So I don't know... Uh, <clears throat> You know, for most people, they really don't understand what I'm talking about, and that's that's okay. Um, other people uh, think I'm pretty scary, and, you know, that's okay, too. Uh, and, and, you know, just, you know, some of the comments from the the movie uh, A New Dawn uh, was that uh, the fact that, you know, I would sit there and pause and, and look at the camera was uh, unsettling for most people. They... These are people that truly don't understand what the inspirational process is. Um, a lot of the times, I, <clears throat> most of the time, I don't know what I'm going to say until I say it. Um, then what happens is I have to, for time, I have to stop speaking. At which point, new inspiration comes down, and uh, I'm able to interpret that. And then I, then I say what, what comes down from that. That takes some non-doing, and some of the times in the video where I'm sitting there, I I will freeze completely because I am not doing anything except receiving. Uh, it's a different way of being. I don't think the solutions uh, the solutions are already formed. I just merely have to stop thinking long enough to actually uh, uh, observe them and uh, and and receive the inspiration. Um, so it looks kind of weird to certain people that don't understand. I, I'm, I'm sure Nikola Tesla would understand exactly what I'm talking about. Um, not that I compare myself with him or you know any of the other uh, people who are uh, you know awake, but uh, I certainly understand you know how inspiration works for me and some of the requirements for, for me. Um, I mean, it's a it's a truly meditative state in that there's no thought in my head. There's no actions, there's no feeling, it's just uh, a business or a thereness uh, where I am simply set apart and observing uh, what occurs. Uh, it, it just jumps out uh, from, from nowhere. Uh, I mean, it, it is, you know, serendipitous, it is inspiration, it comes from the nothing. Um, so, you know, at which point the ego then takes over and then begins to interpret, you know, the, the inspirational message that, that comes down. I'm not channeling uh, or anything like that. I'm just utilizing and connecting to the mind and and, uh, and uh, just leveraging that. I mean, it's nothing special. Anybody can do it. Uh, well, not anybody can do it. Uh, they have to be in a position uh, to be ready for it, of course. Uh, but when they are, they, you know, there's nothing special about it. It's not magical or anything like that. It's not supernatural or anything. So what I see happening is uh, we we largely uh, as you know a conscious being um, are beset with certain items that uh, 
that we've placed before ourselves, and and those are you know weapons, drugs, poison, uh, hate, uh, fear, and this uh, and a, another secret component, and you know of course. We are supposed to believe um, or that, you know, among those items, that that's going to be, you know, these are the tools that we're going to use to save ourselves, that, that we have to fight, and uh, there has to be conflict, and, and this is a disagreement, um, this is a philosophical or ideological or, or religious, or it's a function of... Uh, uh, you know, certain people not knowing the facts, uh, and those people um, don't deserve the uh, respect uh, to even be heard. That um, it is our duty to um, get rid of them and kill them because uh, because of who they are, or because um, that particular their particular bodies are, you know, of a particular genetic stock, um, or they're broken, or, you know, I mean, it's just nonsense. Um, it, it, all this is is just an excuse to kill people. Um, okay, you know, it's an excuse. Um, you know, if you believe, if you believe that, you know, killing people is actually going to uh, somehow... Uh, justify you in, in in your actions and 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 prove that you know, the rightness of your action. Um, well, you know, kill us all, and you'll find that you'll still be wrong. Um, but you know, this whole wrong right thing, and you know, if you believe that beating yourself in the face with a hammer is is the way to go about it, uh, you know, who am I to judge? Um, I will conclude in my experience, uh, in in my judgment. That action, that beat myself in the face with a hammer, um, for me, is wrong. Uh, your results will vary, and if you believe that hitting your face in, uh, with a hammer is is what you need to do, then I suggest you you test that out for yourself and draw your own conclusions. So the secret component that I've uh, been talking about is. Um, not that secret because it's right there in front of our faces the whole time. And what it is is suggest it, it merely a suggestion about what reality is, where you are, who you are, why you're here, and what you should do, think, feel and how you should perceive it, okay? Um, the mechanisms uh, of this are, uh, you know, science and, and standard model. Uh, the, the futility of standard model, uh, it's very important that, that the universe expands infinitely and then just dies or just blinks out because, you know, at which point, hey, you know, there's... Man, no big deal. There's no reason to be alive. There's no purpose or meaning. You you know, you might as well do as we tell you to do, and or just have fun. But you know, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't you know want to keep people from having fun. But you know, they have a weird idea of fun. Uh, I don't think going around you know dropping drones on people is very fun. I mean, certainly ask the people that are doing it. They don't seem to think it's fun. Nor the people that are having drones dropped on them. They. Uh, they don't think it's fun for a few seconds while they have a opportunity to experience what it's like. Um, so I just, you know, I, I, I don't listen to this stuff anymore and I don't necessarily think that I want to feed into it. But the secret component, um, we have a lot of elements uh, marshaled, a lot of resources marshaled to make sure that your perception of reality is in alignment with what they tell you it is uh, so that they can maximize the amount of suffering in your experience and of course seek them out as you know some sort of you know uh, uh, you know relief uh, so they can 
you know, provide assistance or you become dependent on them because, you know, hey, you know, otherwise, you know, there's uh, unlimited scarcity. <laughs> And, uh, you know, if you, you don't do what they say, then, you know, you, you don't get to have stuff or you don't get to eat and you're just going to die and, and you should be continually afraid that that's going to happen. Um, I don't know. I, I just stopped doing it. And guess what? Didn't die and, you know, I'm still here watching and still okay, you know. <laughs> so uh, I just, that, at which point then their credibility in that matter was completely uh, wrong. Uh, but we have, we're being deprived of, uh, you know, safe food, um, a, a safe environment. Um, our, our environment's becoming more and more radioactively polluted. Um, they are uh, introducing all kinds of man-made poisons into our environment. It is having an effect. Uh, it is damaging DNA. It's ruining our, our bodies and our tools and our ability to even be here. Um, uh, no judgment there. That's just a, that's just what's happening. Uh, apparently, that's what an unconscious being requires. Uh, so you know, watch the movie and enjoy it. At least watch it while you can until your body fails too. And and you know, there's no need for you to you know watch this movie anymore. So what we are given. Um, you know, we we don't have safe food. We really don't have anything. I, I saw a figure come out, and I, I can't can't really attribute it to anybody, but it, it really said that that there are 80 people in this world that own more than the bottom 50 percent of the people on this planet. 80 people. Um, I'm looking around and he says, "Wow, you know, if you've got that much control." Over the resources, and this is the best that you can do. Perhaps you're the wrong 80 people. Um, most especially because you don't really appreciate that. You know the way you're going about this, you're not going to make it either. Um, I don't care how many seed vaults you have. Um, I don't care how much technology or how many skilled robot people that you leave alive to, you know, uh, act as your servants. Um, you're making, uh, you know, interesting choices that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's not a function of control. They don't have any more control over the experience uh, than we do, uh, the lower 50%. And uh, they're made to do what they, uh, you know, what they're, what they're to do. They, they don't have much choice, but it's not impressive. Um, it's not. It's not even interesting for me to watch. Uh, so we don't have anything substantive anymore. Uh, we get junk. Uh, we don't have we don't have a living wage. Uh, most of us, uh, a lot of us, aren't even working. Can't work because there's nothing for us to. Nothing's been provided for us to do. Uh, certainly nothing constructive. If you want to build bombs or or, or create poisons or uh, or you know, uh, walk through radioactive places with, you know, this idea that, you know, somehow you are helping, then, then you, you're permitted to do that. Uh, but anything real and constructive, uh, those, those options have really been taken away from us. Uh, so we exist in the scarcity. So a lot of us, to keep from actually, you know, accepting what it is that we see, we just flood ourselves with distraction. Uh, we buy more and more into this false secret component, this this modification of reality, uh, or at least the perception of it. And what we what we are left with is a virtual wealth and a virtual experience. So we spend our time either taking chemicals that make us feel like somebody else, and it's certainly not who we are. Um, and it's either that or, you know, some of us are uh, addicted to video games where, uh, in, you know, in, in cyberspace, we can mound up wealth and, you know, actually have adventures. Uh, but quite frankly, it's not wealth. It's not real experience. And, you know, all of a sudden one day you wake up and, you know, you're in a dump apartment 
uh, you know, with a computer in front of you, and you've been spending weeks and weeks and weeks playing a game that really hasn't improved your real situation at all. Uh, not to say that, you know, even when you do have that revelation, that there's really much you're going to be able to do. Um, I don't see... Uh, I, I don't see anything that's going to return us to a, a, a place of, uh, of other, in, anything other than deception and anything other than injustice. And the reason I say that is, you know, still, I mean, after nine years, I, I can't walk down the street and find 12 people that know the law. If you don't know the law, then you have no concept of justice. It will elude you. You don't even know what it is. In fact, most people... You know, a court, there is no court of law, these are administrative courts, and even if there were a court of law, most people exist outside of a, uh, the realm where even a the court of law would actually apply. Uh, a court of law applies to people who are strictly responsible uh, uh, for their actions and then strictly responsible for their experience. Um, that's not most people. Um, most people, they enjoy these administrative courts, which, you know, they're, they're call courts, but basically they're just, they're just shows. Um, there's nothing really meaningful. They're not, they're not about providing justice for anybody. Um, they're there to distract you from justice because, you know, what are you going to do? Um, you're you're not in a place where where you enjoy it. I mean, if you go to the Matrix movies and you see Mr. Smith, the symbol of the, you know the corporation, you know, going in and turning everybody into these corporate dead entities, you know, like you know, and they get encompassed with black. And of course, that's it. I mean, we're in dead vessels. Somebody in a dead vessel has no have voluntarily placed themselves there, and they have no rights. They cannot enjoy justice. Um, they're there to, to suffer until they stop suffering. Um, uh, most people aren't even aware uh, enough that they're even in that kind of situation. Uh, so th those of you who are, you know, reading law books and, 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 and see that, you know, they're looking for some sort of procedure to escape this, I mean, you're, you're wasting your time um, because most people aren't aware enough uh, to even appreciate justice, um, you know, uh, none of these criminals out there, uh, or what we perceive as criminals, um, they don't have anything to be afraid of from, from most of the people out there. Uh, most of the people out there don't even understand key principles in the law, and that is, you know, uh, due process of law, uh, remedy and recourse. You know, what that habeas corpus, what the heck is that? You know, caveat emptor, what's that? You know, uh, what's a contract? You know, you know, we, 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 we think a contract is just a piece of paper that, you know, tells us to do stuff, and we either do it or we suffer even more. I mean, you know, uh, that's not true understanding of what a contract is. That That's something else. That's that's something uh, that's an illusion, and you know, and of course, yeah, all that, all, all that, you know, ignorance is actually reinforced by what we see on television and what we see in the movies. Now, understand something, people. I mean, you know, I'm here in the United States, and I'm sure I'm not special. I mean, this this place has literally become a third world shithole. You know, I'm sorry about the kids out there; I might be hearing it, but it's become a shithole. Uh, most of the people, uh, I mean, there are people all over the place that are just. St literally starving to death, and and however they still hold to their perception of reality, and then the uh, you know there's there's a whole host of other people that that look at people that have no means of actually uh, uh, sustaining themselves and say oh well you know it's because they're lazy, you know or they're stupid. Well you know that that being said you know uh, we still have a responsibility to take care of these people. <laughs> You know, we're just depriving them of, uh, of any means of, of, of sustainability. We're murdering them. We're killing them. Um, you, you don't do that. Well, you don't do that without consequences. So, you know, uh, you know if, if you think that, you know, getting rid of all these people is going to be a solution, guess what? Um, it's not. Um, law is. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. You know, if you think it's a good idea to go out and whack everybody, guess what? <laughs> You're next. Uh, so that's the way the law works. And, you know, I don't care how much power you think you have. Um, 
you know, you're going to, there's going to be a reconciliation um, for your own good. So, what I see happening in consciousness is, is just merely self-abuse. Um, I know there are parents out there that have children that that will these children will beat themselves continually, and of course the parents are just freaking out. Uh, but the, the, the you know ha, and have no means of actually stopping these children from beating themselves. Well, uh, unfortunately, whose fault is it that the child recognizes a an environment? that's toxic, both emotionally and, and even, dare I say, intellectually, although intellectually isn't, isn't very useful. Um, it, it, it lacks wisdom. Um, uh, it, it might be intellectually sound, but, you know, logic and, logic and, uh, and reason are, are, are two totally different things. So these children beat themselves. They beat their heads against the wall, or they beat their faces with their fists, and, and the parents are just, I mean, they're just panicking, and, and they have no means of actually stopping it. And so a lot of the times these parents will just medicate these kids uh, to the point where the kids don't, aren't even functioning. Now, or they've stopped hitting themselves, but they're not living anymore. Uh, they're just, you know, they're just, completely comatose. I mean, their level of consciousness is so low. Um, but the parents have to understand that the children are much more astute at the danger of, of our world and what we've created uh, than we are. Yeah, I appreciate the fact that you think you know the right way of interpreting that secret component and that you know how reality works and how things are and that you're trying to you know condition your child to uh to to exist seamlessly in your confused state of reality but the child isn't going there uh, and more and more children are are being born that are certainly more astute than their parents uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, their parents have been eating poisoned food their whole lives. Uh, many of them don't have two, or two neurons to rub together. And they have attention spans of about three seconds. So there's not going to be anything really meaningful that they're going to be able to pass on to their children. And, you know, fortunately, their children know it. And, of course, their children don't want to be there. So they're going to beat themselves and abuse themselves and, until something changes. And, you know, what do you do? What do you do? I, I, I don't know what to do. But what I'm seeing in consciousness is the same thing. I, I, I see consciousness self-abusing itself. And, and you know what? Hey, I have to take responsibility. Uh, I am a part of consciousness. Um, the difference is, um, and th there's just a profound, there's just two sides. Right? There, there are the ones that are conscious and watch this monstrosity. And there are the people that are unconscious. Now, whether they're conscious or unconscious, they, we don't have really a lot of control over what, what's occurring. This must be the purpose of our experience. Um, it is a useful experience. Um, like I said, an evolving being has to actually experience at some point what it feels like uh, to self self abuse itself to the point where it, it ends, and I'm afraid from all indications that I see nothing that's going to actually turn that around. Uh, <coughs> um, however, there are others that are uh, that are similar to me in that they do see the same things occurring, but they're as powerless as I to actually affect any kind of meaningful change. Um, and that's okay, uh, because this is the movie we're watching. Um, you know, and, I'm, and, and whether you're conscious of what's going on or not conscious, it really doesn't matter. I mean, there's no judgment here. Uh, you're, you know, it's, it's, again, I'll use the movie theater metaphor. Whether you believe yourself to be the actor on the screen 
or you know yourself to be sitting in the audience watching the actor on the screen, the movie still plays out. However, I did notice that once I became conscious, the nature of the movie did change. Now, did I do it? I don't know. I, I, I'm more of the opinion that that was the time in my particular experience that I did gain that consciousness. And of course everything was going to change because that was part of the movie that was going to change. That was that, you know, the big change. So I got to see the difference. Now, did I affect that difference? I don't think I have any more control now than I did before. However, I do uh, see things uh, quite a bit differently. A lot of the, the negative emotion has been removed from the experience and you know even when it gets really intense uh, I'm not affected in the same way that that I was before so you know I I, I doubt very seriously that there's anything I'm going to be able to tell you here that's actually going to bring about that magical wonderful change uh, that change is going to occur when it needs to occur and that's going to be it um, and you'll go with it. You'll be in the same position. I don't see a whole lot of that. I, I, I don't know how many witnesses, legitimate, competent witnesses, uh, are needed to witness this crime. I, I, I think we have enough. I think there's enough already that are actually witnessing uh, what's going on in, in a very detailed way and in a very lucid way and, and, and watching the abomination as it, as it plays out. And I'll have to say it's abominable. It's, it's uncomfortable. Um, uh, it's uncomfortable for me. I, I, you know, I, I accepted the futility of the experience. Um, uh, it's naive to even, in my perspective, to even say, oh, well, what are you going to do about it? Well, what can I do about it? I mean, I, I've spent nine years. I, I, I you know, I, I have information out there that really I don't, you know, say for a few people. I don't, I don't think anybody's really talking about this. Uh, certainly, er, uh, most people believe that uh, you know, armies and armies of people with guns somehow uh, are, are, you know, have the power to, you know, uh, you know, to affect others, you know, against their will. I, I, I don't believe that. I, I believe they may have, may have power to. Uh, uh, affect others, you know, uh, uh, according to the will, um, not necessarily the people who are, you know, being abused or suffering, um, but they don't have any more control than their victims. They're made to do that, you know, and their victims are made to experience that. Um, we'll all, in the end, we'll all have that experience, uh, and it'll all be useful to us. And, you know, at which point we'll probably judge, well, you know what, hey, War is an interesting thing, uh, you know. Not that we really probably need to do that. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, um, I would think that you know, after an experience like we've had here on Earth over the history of man in this immediate uh, lesson plan for you know, who, who knows, maybe thirty thousand years or so. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to judge that. Hmm, you know, war is probably not a good thing, and you know, certain other things are not good. But you know, who knows? You know, who's to say we not we might not just etch a sketch this particular version of the universe and and create a new, more complicated one? Or you know, because you know, quite frankly, you know, I have to be honest. I I don't think the Walt Disney endings uh, uh, is what we're going to have here because we probably had them before, and you know, they're only so entertaining and they're only so inter useful. You know. <laughs> Okay, everything works out great. You know, nothing bad's happening. Everything's cool. We're all getting together. It's all, everything's great. Um, you know, it's just like, you know, being in heaven. I mean, how long would I last in heaven? I'd, what, about 10 minutes? Start looking at my watch like, you know, geez, man. You know, this is great, man. It's a sunny day. You know, everything's great. You know, and geez, I'd be bored out of my mind. You know, I didn't come here. I didn't come here for Walt well, Disney. I, I came here for... For, for the, the complexity of the experience, you know, we are evolved beings, you know, you know. I mean, this is, this, is, this is actually beyond the concept, you know, the mundane little concepts of good and evil and morality and immorality. I mean, uh, there is something very necessary about, uh, about depravity. We're certainly experiencing it. Uh, uh, wisdom would suggest that we really, as uh, as a consciousness, uh, really only need to experience this once. And if we're going to blow it, we might as well blow it 
and uh, and and gain as much as we can from the experience that, that we possibly can, such that um, you know we, you know our judgment will be sound and complete when uh, at some point that judgment needs to be made. So so here we are. Uh, I I don't think it's uh, I don't think that there's anything that I am going to do about it. However. You know, if, if you were in a position where you're ready, and, you know, because it's not a matter of what I'm going to do, it, it would be interesting to see what you're going to do. Um, you know, uh, if you believe that you have the control, and, you know, hey, well, you know, have a spontaneous moment. Um, you know, snap out of it. You know, see if you can. You know, if you can, then that's fine. It's a great part, it's a great movie to be in. Um, you know, but I haven't seen a lot of it. Uh, we're going in a particular direction. Uh, I happen to think that you know some of the things that have occurred uh, are pretty much irreversible. Um, the amount of radiation that Fukushima is going to put out mm, is not going to be sustainable. Uh, either you know, magic green guys come down here and solve our problems for us, and you know, I don't know if I was a magic green guy, I, I don't necessarily think I, I'd pretty much say, well, you know, hey, you know, you fiddled around with nuclear power, you, you know what you knew what the consequences were, uh, you did it anyway, and you know, now you messed your shit up, and <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I think it. We we just let you, you know, let you suffer in it. You know, at least your sacrifice will uh, will vindicate, you know, our, you know, our, uh, uh, you know, our knowledge that, uh, you know, you don't want to go down that way. Um, you know, per perhaps this is uh, why uh, uh, there aren't a lot of, uh, you know, perceived civilizations out there on other stars, because uh, maybe they all get to the point where hey, they play around with nuclear war and they ain't any smarter or wiser than we are, and eventually what happens is they poison their entire environment with uh, with radiation to the point where they themselves don't exist, so then they get et etch a sketch back to cockroach or single-celled organism, and they, you know, maybe there's that, that upper limit on, on, you know, on intellect. I mean, I, <laughs> um, I, but, you know, I can't speak for other planets and other places. I've been there. Um, you know, who do I know? I, I can, however. I mean, I've been out here on Earth, and um, I see a huge obstacle now. And you know, uh, you know this this idea that you know somehow there's going to be some sort of political solution or religious solution or spiritual solution. I, I don't see that happening. Uh, uh, I, I quite frankly, I don't think the Russians teaming up with the Chinese are going to solve anybody's problem. Uh, I, I, I think it's I think it's naive to think that um, because. You know, look. I, I mean, al al although you know Vladimir Putin may uh, may be perceived as you know uh, somebody who who uh, you know is is playing a great game game of chess. I, I think in the end he's one man, and when he's outlived his usefulness, he'll go the way of everybody else who's had a good idea. Uh, you know, um, th th there's this 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 weird under underlying pressure. So the secret component, you know, what is it? I mean, it, it, it is this fabrication of a false reality such that you make decisions and respond to that false reality uh, in an irresponsible way. Well, it's technically not irresponsible, but you're simply adjusting to uh, an insane world. Well, of course, if you're adjusting to an insane world, then you have to make insane choices uh, in, in order to, 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 to respond correctly. Uh, the, the problem is, is it's not a, it's not really an insane world. It's just merely uh, people who are are creating an illusion that it is insane. It, it, it is quite sane. Uh, there are insane people in there that are acting irresponsibly, uh, but that's them. Now, if you want to buy into that, you know, ha have at it, have have fun. Um, I don't buy into it anymore. No, I, I do think it's easy, uh, interesting from an observational standpoint to see exactly how much effort is is being applied to to this illusion. Uh, I mean, just the you know the uh, you know the agents in government uh, and what we call uh, law enforcement and the agents of finance. Uh, I mean, look at 
look at the amount of resources that are just being thrown against simply convincing you that reality isn't reality. Um, you, you know, even even when you go to uh, uh, to a movie or you watch a DVD, uh, take time to actually look at the credits. You know, a lot of the stuff is CGI because it's not real. Well, uh, right at the end of the movie, they say uh, this is an uh, this is a work of fiction. Even the ones that are based on a true story, uh, you have no means of discerning. Okay, what what part of it was true? Uh, what part of it was false? Because they never actually go through an outline. Okay, well, that, you know that part was true, but you know it, what I found they they give you just enough truth to to maintain your state of confusion. Uh, because when you start rebelling, uh, you, they have to throw you a bone to draw you back in. So w w next time you watch a uh, you know a current movie and you're really entertained and distracted from your existence and you, and you spend those two hours not living but actually existing in a you know alternative reality, uh, l look at the number of people that it actually took to to produce that illusion. I mean, it's brigade strength at least especially these uh, these guys that do the CGI rendering and the post-production. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of people on these, uh, on these movies. Uh, and the amount of resources that are being applied uh, to to fabricate this thing, uh, uh, the, this image of reality, I mean, it's mind-boggling. We realize how, how, mu how much is actually being put into just the idea that this false sense of reality is real. Um, or, or you look at, let's say, let's say the church, and, and how much energy is put into sermons and and, and, and counsel uh, to ensure that you don't figure it out, that you don't just stop and say, "Hey, <laughs> enough of this." I mean, it, 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 it's mind-boggling. Um, it, with respect to the media itself, I mean, look how many people are out there just, just, just giving you uh, enough to, to keep you confused. And, 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 hey, you know, I know there's some good people out there, uh, but really, I mean, you're being buried. You're being buried by divisions, divisions and divisions of armies uh, of people who are attempting to ensure um, that you have this perception of complete powerlessness, um, that, that, that people, large numbers of people with guns, are uh, uh, have the power to do something against your will. I mean, the, the the only only one that needs to fear a criminal is a criminal. If you can get yourself uh, to a point where you're not in a continual state of criminality, and you you're aware enough to know what it is that you're doing is sabotaging your experience, and you stop self-abusing yourself, then you don't have to be afraid of criminals. Uh, criminals need to be afraid of criminals, um, but people who who are not in that state, you know, hey, you're just you're just here for the show. You're just happy to be here. So this, these brigades and divisions of, of this army, um, most of these people actually are very vulnerable. You know, if you look, it's at eighty percent. People own this and control this vast amount of wealth. That's 80 people, folks. Okay? So, how do they do it? Well, everybody below them is confused. Think, uh, probably confused by thinking, hey, you know, we're on the inside. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. That if you're one of those people that believe yourself, believe yourself to be on the inside, you're probably not. Uh, uh, especially if you're doing stuff that's not even uh, in your own best interest, and you know you, you know you know what those behaviors are. So, again, watching watching these these movies, playing these video games, and I'm not to say that's necessarily wrong to do this. I mean, I, I watch movies too. I, I don't. I watch TV uh, most of the time. I, you know, I'm wondering. Hmm, do I need to watch other people improving their homes? 
you know, I, I look around in my neighborhood, and I, and most people are, you know, starving to death. I mean, hungry. They're living on the edge. I mean, they're one paycheck away from destitution. Um, you know, they're not they're not putting granite countertops in. They're not expanding their stuff. But, you know, we watch it on TV, or, or, or we watch people cook food that we don't have a chance of actually acquiring ourselves. But we have the experience of them cooking this food and them eating this food while we sit around eating, you know, Pop-Tarts, you know, <laughs> and macaroni, poison macaroni and cheese. And, and but, you know, we're, we're, we're watching that, you know, that's, you know, uh, but that's virtual experience and it's not real. And, and we do this because, you know, all of a sudden we would have to wake up and realize, hey, wait a minute, man, this isn't working out for me. Uh, so, so we distract ourselves with this and, you know, so... So when you watch these movies and, and this army of people actually are, you know, broadcasting this, this, this false sense of reality, you understand that, you know, if there's just 80 people controlling that wealth, whose fault is this? Um, I, I don't think it's the 80, P, 80 people's fault. I, I, I think it's most people who are so gripped by fear that, that you know, that they keep doing what it is that they're doing. And, keep believing the, this lie um, that's who's truly at fault I mean if they're just 80 people man you just you know that, that's not an issue I mean you don't even have to kill them you just swamp them and you know you know it reintroduce them to reality uh, I mean that I, I don't think that that's even an obstacle but the mechanism by which they transmit this false real, reality is incredibly vulnerable. It could be taken out any time because all of this is largely dependent on, on an infrastructure, and that infrastructure is electricity. All it would take, really, uh, is a couple of EMPs. I mean, you know, a... Uh, uh, a uh, uh, you know a detonated nuclear device in uh, upper atmosphere to create a, you know a, a pulse, and that inductive pulse would go and destroy you know much of the electronics. And it doesn't even have to be a, a nuclear device. It, it, the sun itself is perfectly capable of generating EMP sufficient to put every electronic device out of action. So then what happens? Well, guess what? Uh, you don't watch a movie. You don't watch TV. Uh, you don't do a whole lot of things. Uh, however, you're no longer uh, you're no longer being bombarded with this nonsense. Oh, I'm sure they could probably fly over with leaflets and drop propaganda on you. Uh, but really, um, I don't see where they're deliberately going to take the power grid down because of the the potency of of that reality. What I see is is them leaving these mechanisms in place and just simply creating this illusion that it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and, and eventually what we do is we get to a point where we believe it to be so bad that you know we end ourselves or we freak out and we start shooting one another and uh, and but I don't really think that it's in any but in their interest to actually you know um, actually kick off the war that you think is going to be the you know the world war that's going to you know destroy everything. Um, I, I think what they do is they just simply give us the illusion that it's just right around the corner and so that we li constantly live in this fear and, and this futility and this absurdity until you know at some point we had enough and of course uh, then 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 of course we follow their solution and you know if you've been watching any of the modern movies you have to have a you know have to be a superhero with you know extra strong muscles and you know you basically go out and fight the bad guys well guess what uh, you're the bad guys and the only ones you're going to be fighting is yourself and again it's just another form of self abuse um, and it ain't going to be any useful it's not going to be any useful to you um, actually no fighting is required uh, so why do we continually expose ourselves to uh, indulging in this fantasy that somehow our solution is is, is kill the bad guys um, there's going to be an endless stream of bad guys paraded in front of us 
And I don't see any stopping of the bad guys. Uh, they're certainly easy to stop. Uh, you know, if we if I could walk down the street and find 12 people that knew the law, uh, I could stop a whole bunch of bad guys. But, the, folks, you know, I, I like the people in my neighborhood. I mean, I, I do. They're, they're decent people. Uh, but they don't know the law. And they're not in a position to even hear it. I didn't. You know, if you're watching this, I mean, you know, hey, you know, hey, I, I, I appreciate you, but, um, uh, you know, let me know. I mean, are you any more successful teaching other people the law? And, and, that, and that's the key there, folks. Um, the law is the key. If you're not teaching the law, um, then you're not helping anybody. Uh, yeah, and the the one that you need to really concern yourself the most is is yourself. Do you know the law? You might think you know the law, um, but until you do know the law, we, I, the consciousness, will not experience justice. Now, is it necessary that that we don't experience justice? I don't know. I, I've got a pretty good appreciation of justice now that I know it was. I, I have a much greater appreciation for justice uh, in, in watching what occurs when one doesn't have it. Uh, like uh, That's sort of like freedom. Um, you know, we really don't have a true appreciation of freedom until <laughs> we're no longer free. Love, same thing. You know, you don't appreciate love until you don't have any. Uh, so, is it necessary? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe we are truly gaining an appreciation for what the world is like without justice. Yeah. Are we ready to do something about it? Or are we ready to change it? Or is the movie getting to the place where it's going to change it? I don't see any indication. However, I have, in my experience, noticed that surprise is a key element. And I'm ready to be surprised. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have no answer. Um, I, I guess that's a question. That's a question everybody has to ask. Um, you know, uh, is this what I need? Um, I'm not abusing myself here, uh, but I am witnessing self-abuse. And like the parent uh, uh, of a child who's abusing him, him or herself, there is an amount of frustration. Uh, or let's just say there was an amount of frustration. I, I'm not as frustrated about it as I used to be. Um, I'm content to watch the show play out to, you know, to the end, as long as this particular flesh body has a, oh yeah, that was a gratuitous hand motion. I, I know you've come to expect it, you know, but, you know. <laughs> so, sorry, I didn't mean to be weird. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, maybe I did mean to be weird. Okay, so, you know, that's it, folks. I mean, um, I don't know how much comfort I can I, I can give you. I mean, I, I'm definitely interested in, in watching what, what what's happening, but I don't know if most people are really ready for uh, this unraveling. Um, and and uh, it, it, it just looks like it's just, there's this illusion that, you know, something big's right around the corner, but, uh, you know, every time we get into that situation, it just turns into, eh, oh well, you know, no big deal. Um, anyway, it's either that or there's only a few people that actually appreciate the change. I mean, um, you know, 2012 for most people was a complete bust. It, it just justified their skepticism. I don't know. I I saw something pretty pro profound happening in, in 2012, just about that time. Uh, you know what it is exactly? Hmm. What is it? Um, I do know one thing. Um, that before there seemed to be a tendency and a leaning towards being able to maintain deception where I don't think that that I, I don't see that happening anymore I, I, I think what's happening now is is these things that w were easy to lie about and, and, and kept be, you know keep secret uh, are, are now just jumping right out in front of us um, and, and, and it's so plentiful and it's 
it, you know, it, 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 it's so frequent that we become desensitized to it. I mean, you, you imagine, you, you take somebody even, even 10, 15, 20 years, you know, in, in the past, and you put them in this current situation. I mean, they would go, they would just completely freak out. I mean, you know, like 30 years, you know, I've been around a while, and I, I, I've watched stuff, and, you know, I watch what's going around here, and I'm just saying, you know. Oh, unfortunately, there's young people out there that don't know any different. You know, they, they have no concept of, uh, of, you know, what it's like to actually exist without scarcity. Uh, or without uh, without actually being completely terrified that you know right around the corner you know something a volcano or an asteroid or a comet or or you know a Yellowstone's going to blow up or World War Three is going to get kicked off we're all going to be de dead um, you know uh, you know this was stuff that was in the background but you know people didn't exist totally preoccupied with disaster. Um, and and it's certainly some of the stuff that's occurring with with regard to you know law enforcement, um, you know, uh, it's it, I mean it's beyond the point of absurdity. It, 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 it's beyond the point of it being funny. Um, it's it, it, it's sad. Um, you know, I I don't think running around shooting people's dogs. Uh, uh, is, it, it is a benefit to anybody, even though maybe that dog was a menace. Uh, but more often than not, it's just um, just cheapening and and destroying, you know, the meaningful aspect of our experience. You know, let's get rid of it. I mean, you know, I I I, I think an ocean that is totally devoid of life is interesting uh, to experience. It is experience. It is interesting to experience environments where there's nothing living at all. Um, that is interesting, um, but it's not really as interesting as as an environment where things are living. Uh, now again, you know your your results may vary, uh, um, and you know I'm not trying to pass judgment, but. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, you know well, all indications from the people at uh, at TEPCO is that uh, we have a runaway disaster that is uh, an, an extinction level event, and it's going to just slowly poison us, poison the world to death. Um, um, so yeah, you might as well what act like a reprobate, you know, burn burn your cities down. Uh, you know, attack cops, do all of that, you know, stuff, because, you know, hey, the church and science all tells you, hey, you know, you live in a completely futile environment, you know, reality is really tough, and, and, and you're subject to, you know, any criminality that we choose to inflict on you, so you might as well just be a reprobate, you know, because, you know, hey, you know, acting, uh, you know, you know, you know, being conscientious about your experience, you know, that's only for, for suckers and stupid asses. Um, <laughs> if you want to think that way, have at it. I'm, uh, I'm doing something different. So, you know, hey, time will tell. Maybe you do something different yourself. So, I'm Roge. Not in a wood shop. You, fact, you, you folks have a good one. Okay? Bye-bye.